What? Oh, there we go. Part <laughs> two. Part two. No. Wait, 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 wait. Don't do anything. Hey, we're back. Okay. Now we're going to talk about recording stuff on disks. We got your disk. Full. What? Full disk. Full disk. <laughs> we got your disk in the disk drive. And we talked about, uh, wait, you want to start all the way back from, like, nah, well, what is a disk? No. Okay. Um, Just say, hey, this is a text page, and I recorded it on 200. Right. Here we go. Actually, we're going to start with page 10. In this disk. I'm going to say this is page 10. Okay. Well, remember the center page function? Bang. Centers each row individually is what it does. And puts the cursor home while it does it. I'm going to insert a row. Bring that down one. Okay. Cursor still home. Now I'm going to take the cursor and move the cursor to the end of the 10. Now see that giant cursor shape is the huge character that the, uh, the centering operation creates. If I put a record mark in there, oh, you have to put a record mark. Okay, it looks like old vertical stripes. There's the cursor, there's the record mark. Now I'm gonna put the record, the cursor home, what we've done now is set up a relationship where everything between the cursor and the record mark gets recorded and its spacing and everything. Come over to the keypad, hit clear address, and select number 10, one, zero, that's 10, that's it, page 10. And to record it, you press the record button, thusly. Done. Okay, the record button is located way over here out of accidental reach because it's serious business when you press that record button. You're recording something on the thing, on the disk. Okay, there it is. Now, if I were to go, I uh, hit erase. Erase is up here, actually. Okay. And then, clear address. One. There, page 10. Read. It comes back. In the process, it increments this to 11. And if I were to now erase this and say, we want a different font, say, this is page 11. Whoops. Let's not center that, let's just, uh, okay, I'm going to take the cursor down, new line, new line, new line, this, this is new line, and skip it over and put a little record mark in there, okay, record mark is, go in real close on that. That's enough of a record mark. That'll do. The first one was real big because we centered the page, but that's fine. And home, okay. Home, record mark. Page 11 is already incremented here. So hit record, and it takes it. Just a second. Bang. Okay. This goes up to page 12. That increments to page 12. And we're in business. Now let's play it back. Maybe race. Clear address. 10, read. Okay, now if I want to see page 11 in the same spot, I can't just hit read again, because here's what happens. Okay. Why did that happen? Well, 10, read. The cursor is here. Okay, when it plays it back, in, when you just hit read, 
It puts the cursor at the end of the record mark, not where you had it when you recorded. It plays it back and it says, okay, I'm done playing back and that's where the cursor is. If you read another address out, it thinks that that's where it should start from and it reads accordingly. So you have to take that home and hit read and you get page 11. Now what that did was it rewrote over page 10 and made it say page 11. So the point of this is that where, th and here's the cursor, it's at the end of the, uh, oh, well. well, it's at the end of, the, of the, all the text. Where the cursor is when you hit read is important. So the cursor should be at the home position when you record, and it should be at the home position when you read. When you have a series of things to read like that, though, so let's do one more. We, we did page 10, page 11. Well, now let's do, change the color and pick another font. And say this is page 12, all right? Home, insert, 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 center page, okay, take the cursor down, okay, take it over, get one of those real wide characters because that's, because it was centered and it's created one of those weird characters, hit record mark, uh, here's the cursor, there's the record mark, I'm going to jump the cursor home. Now if I record on page, if I press record, I'm going to get everything between the cursor and the record mark on page 12. Okay, I'm going to erase it. Now if I have to spit out a series of things in a row, there's something besides read. There's a function called read next. Okay. And right there. What that does is it puts the page off the disk into a little buffer and lets you spit them out very quickly. So to do that, I'm going to clear the address, say 10, which was the first page. Instead of hitting read, I'm going to hit read next. What do I get? Nothing. Why? Because the prompt says read next buffer ready. The first thing it did was load page 10 into the buffer when I press read next again, it'll take page 10, put it up on the screen, put page 11 into the buffer. When I hit read next after that, it'll, it'll put page 11 on the screen, put page 12 in a buffer, and it'll keep doing that as long as there are pages to put in a buffer. So let's see that work. There's page, there's no one, there's no one. Why won't it do anymore? Because there's no more messages, and it tells you that. It flashes at you, it says no message found. We didn't record a page 13, and sure enough, didn't find one. The only way to stop a flashing message, as you recall, is the space bar. And that's that. We're in business. Okay, now, I'm going to hit erase. What else? How else can you get things to spit out? You can have them read. You can have them read next. There are two other playback, three other playback modes. And that's what this stuff is. Roll, okay, crawl, slow reveal. Okay, forget this stuff for a minute. Roll, crawl, slow reveal. And then these top buttons are the speeds. One of four speeds to have something roll, crawl, or to slow reveal. Okay, uh, let's deal with slow reveal first. Okay, slow reveal. It's similar to read, you just deal with it uh, you clear the address, you pick page 10. Instead of hitting read, you hit slow reveal. Okay, now what happens? Let's come up to the screen. It did a couple things. It moved, it moved the cursor to the first character. Remember, that's where the T for this was about there. And it comes down here and it says slow reveal, speed, zero. It has, you can select um, one of nine speeds to have this thing type out, and you do that over here on the pad. 
Okay, I'm going to select page, or speed rather, six. And when I do that, it types them out. Okay, let's see that again. Erase, 10, slow reveal. Okay, cursor jumps down to the first character. Now the last speed I selected was six, and sure enough, it gives me six again. I could select another speed, nine. Have it go real fast. Now if I don't reset the page, 11 was already selected. I can hit slow reveal, and now it's all set to do page 11, speed seven. Okay, erase. It's already queued up to page 12. Slow reveal, speed five. All right. Clear address, page 10. Okay, I'm not gonna read it. I'm not gonna read it next. I'm not gonna slow reveal it. I'm going to roll. Roll buffer loading. Rolling. Okay, it is now Wait, no, it's not either. You have to select a speed. There we go. Okay, now it's just going to roll right through page 10, page 11, and page 12 because the reason it's going to do that is that we put record marks at the end of each page and not... Um, okay. This prompt is saying... No end of message mark found. The only way to stop it is hit spacebar. What did it mean by that? What it meant was there's another way of telling it that you're at the end of a message besides a record mark. I'm going to go back and create a page 13 now. No, I'm not either. I'm going to redo page 12. 12, read. Okay, there's 12. Okay, there's the cursor, right? Cursor. We'll take the cursor down to the, put it actually on the record mark. I'm going to erase that by just hitting spacebar. I, I wrote over it. Now there's no record mark there. Instead, I'm going to use right next to the record mark button is something called end of message. It leaves a pattern of slightly different, it's not vertical stripes, it's more like a little grid. You can't really, yeah, there you go. Okay, it's a little different. And that's, well, let's re-record page 12. I'm going to put the cursor home. I'm going to say clear address, page 12. Record. Oh, it won't let me do that. Take a look at the prompt line. Duplicate message. There's already a page 12, right? Okay. Stop that from flashing by hitting the space bar. You gotta get rid of that page 12 first. So check to make sure that still says page 12. Yes, it does. Delete message. Okay, it is nowhere near the record button so that you don't confuse them. Okay, so I'm going to delete message and it says, okay, I'm ready to record page 12. Record. And we've recorded page 12. Now, let's do that same roll again. Clear address, page 10, roll, select a speed. Okay. Now, in the, as you go through that, you're one of four speeds. You can make it go. You can change the speeds, and it was fine. It, the prompt returned to where it had to be, and it was happy because it saw the end of message mark, and it said, okay, that's as far as I'll go. You could have a page 13, and it wouldn't spit that out. It would just take it up to the, rec the end of message mark. Okay, now let's do that again. That page, it could just start from page 11, let's say. Roll, speed one, oops, yeah, speed three, let's say. 11, 12, oh. okay, and nothing flashes at you. Crawl is similar, page 10. Okay, crawl is a function of where the cursor is. We move the cursor down. Wherever you put the cursor, whatever line it's on, 
is the line that the crawl will occur on. Okay, take it down there. Ten crawl. Okay, right now what happens though is it's crawling. Oh, phooey. Crawl doesn't always work either. There we go. Okay, what's if you can remember the way that page was laid out? It's it's crawling all the individual spaces. Now it's going to start on page eleven. <laughs> Come on, you turkey. Anyway, same speeds work. Yes, yes, page one. Bang. Okay. So if you were going to do a crawl, the way you would compose the page, let's compose the page 13, it's a test crawl. You would start with the cursor in the home position and forget what the page looks like. You have to picture it as a string of characters and you just type and keep track of your spaces. This is page 13, comma, A, on S-T-R-A-T, illustration. Okay. Great. End of message mark. Not a record mark, but an end of message mark. Cursor home. Okay, now I'm going to record from the home position all the way through there on page 13. Erase. 13. Crawl. Now while it's running, you can change the speed. And you can hit pause. Okay, the pause button is at, to the left of the speed. Thanks. Page okay, one, pause, one, pause, two, pause, two, three, pause, four. Okay. Roll crawl slow reveal. Read next. Delete. Re that'll also work as read next, but no it won't either, because there was a record it was an end of message. The end of message mark is sort of like a a safety that keeps you from going. If I go back to page 10, now if you recall, page 10 has that on it, right? It has a record mark. Erase. Page 11 has a record mark. Page 12 has an end of message mark. Okay. It's, it's like a... Uh, it's not bars. It's not bars, it's like a grid. It's like a chicken wire or something. Okay. If I tried to read next, I say uh, clear address, 10, read next. Okay, the buffer is ready. There's page 10, there's page 11, there's page 12. I can't go any further because there was an end of message mark there. Okay, it's saying, no, you know what? There's nothing to read next. That's the end of the message. It's like a, little, it's a safety. It's a wall that lets you uh, not accidentally... It's a way of reading things real fast. You can uh, you can read out things real fast and not accidentally get into a page you didn't mean to get to. All right, so I say 10, read next. Okay, it's about as fast as it'll go. Okay. Well, we've talked about a lot of stuff here. I think it's time to move into the control functions. The control functions are that. Okay, see that? Control. Dun, 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 dun. Right next to the delete message, control. Okay. There are three main things that you use uh, control for. Use control. Uh, B. You use control. Uh, P. 
E. And you use control E. Okay, it does not matter whether those are upper or lower case when you use them. Okay. Here's how it works. Let's deal first with control E. Okay. Home. I'm going to insert rows, bring it down a little bit so you can see it. And I'm going to hit new line. Bring my cursor down. I'm going to insert a couple characters to move that over to the center of the page. Okay. Control E. Put the cursor in the home position, and this will deal with the whole page. When the cursor is in the home position, the control functions, uh, the control E at least, will do all the lines at once. E stands for edge. Okay. Control. When I hit control, I get a prompt here that says control. Yeah, stay on the prompt. Yeah. Now I'm going to go down and hit the letter E on the alpha care on the uh, keyboard, right? The letter E, and that gives me the next prompt, which is edge. If I press N, I'll have no edge, none. If I press O, I'll go and start building an outline kind of edge. B for border, S for shadow. Okay. I'm going to go down and press the N key. And um, see what happened to the, the edges here? They went away. This next prompt says, do key will set new system edge. Um, it will only give you that prompt when, you're, when the cursor is in the home position. So I'm going to skip over that prompt by hitting the space bar. Now I'm back to the first menu. OK, let's try outline. O for outline. Oh, it gives me another choice. I want two lines or four lines of edge. Well, I'll take two lines of edge. Do I want a white edge? If I want the edge white, type W. If I don't want the edge white, which it doesn't tell me to do, hit the space bar. I'm going to hit the space bar. Okay, it gave me an outline black two line edge. I'm going to hit the space bar to skip that do key command. And I'm going to say, well, no, I don't like that. I'm going to change that outline. Outline, O for outline, four lines. Well, now it's giving me another prompt. It only gives you this prompt when you select four lines. You want the drop shadow with the outline or not? No, I don't want the drop shadow with the outline. N, white type W. Yeah, let's try it white, type W. OK. I don't want to set the system edge. I'm going to skip that next prompt by hitting the space bar. Okay, let's see what else we can do with it. Oh, how about the border? Yeah, sure. B for border. Two or four lines of edge. Four. You want it white? No, I want it black, so I'm going to hit the space bar. Okay, it's not an outline now, it's an edge. It gave me the original color, which was cyan, and put the edge on. Now, here's a little tricky thing you may want to notice. This here's a very fat black border here, but up here you can't really see it because the screen is black. So you don't often know what the status of the border is. Always check your border status on a program monitor, or or there well there are other ways, but be aware of that. This isn't necessarily showing you. Well, here, watch what happens. Skip this prompt by hitting the space bar. There, that's good. Uh, in fact, if I were to, no. Okay. I'm going to select outline again. Four lines. Four. No drop shadow. N. And I'm going to press the space bar instead of. Well, first of all, no, I won't either. I'm going to press W for white. Okay. The screen. Okay, the prompt screen gives me this in the program, as you can see here. That's nice. But if I had outline for no spacebar, 
well, yeah, okay, it's up there, but I don't see it on the screen because it's black on black with no color fill. Okay, so that can throw you when you see that for the first time. Space bar. Final one is shadow, S for shadow, four lines. Drop shadow, no. White. Okay, so it's different from an edge. It's different from a, a border, it's, it's only, the drop shadow only goes in that direction. Let me step through there quick again. S for shadow, two lines. Not white, but space bar for black. Bang. That's a two line. Okay, space bar to skip over that prompt. Now, I'm going to press the control button again to get out of that mode. If I try to type any other characters, nothing will happen. I'm, I'm in the edge mode here and nothing else is going to work. So, all right. So I have to press control to get out of that. Bang. Okay. Now I'm going to take the cursor and put the cursor out of the home position and, okay, put it on uh, edge, on that line. And do some of these edge functions again. Control E for edge. And it gives me this stuff again. Now watch what happens. If I hit shadow, no, if I hit uh, outline, four, drop shadow with outline, yes. White edge, type W, white. Okay. Oops. I can do, it. edge function is a line at a time. You cannot do it on a per character basis, but you can do it on a line basis by, um, by just putting the cursor on the line you want to control. If I took the cursor up here and I went through the menu again, I could have a different kind of edging. Let's take it a border to black. Okay, so here's one line with a uh, two line black border. There's a four line white drop shadow outline. <laughs> <laughs> and all on the same page isn't that amazing. I can arrange to put one of these in your home <laughs> for a mere $4,000 a month. Um, however, in lieu of that, you can use the one here in the studio. Okay, control, press the control button to come out of that mode and erase the whole damn thing. Now let's talk about, uh, oh, here's another little trick. Uh, notice I'd said um, I was only gonna deal with three functions, control E, control B, and uh, P. Well, I'm gonna show you another one. Control, font, okay. Insert character here. If you take the cursor and put it on the first character of a word, and then you hit control, Okay, you get the control prompt. Then you hit another, any of these font buttons, it will redo the character, the word in that font. Okay. Control six, control four, control two, control one, control five. Word by word, it stops when it gets to a space. Step over to there, control, has to be on the characters. Control three, control one, control six. I'm oh, sorry. Control six, control five, Each control time. three. Each time. Control thing, control thing, control font. It's a quick way of changing a whole. However, what that does, if you recall what I said about font size, is about the size of the invisible row here. Whatever the largest one you go through, if you step through it, it takes the largest one. It doesn't reset the row. Okay, so if I have, if I take, uh, I have a pretty small cursor size here right now. That's a small little row, right? And I try, type control, 
font. Let's bring this up here. And yeah, let's see. control. I'm going to pick a big one. Okay, this row is now that size. If I go back to the other, the cursor stays that size. I've now created a big row, and I'm stuck with it. Okay. This also works for colors. Control. No way of getting that font size back. No way of getting that row size back. There's a question from the audience was, is there any way of returning that? No, the way to return it is to delete the row and retype it, you know, or, or in, reinsert the row in the right font. Control. control color, same thing. Control yellow, control green, control cyan. Come back here, control green, control white. Control blue, control magenta. Okay, um, that's fine on a line by line basis. If I had a whole page, of, if I wanted to redo the whole thing, I could send the character home first, the cursor home rather, home. From the home position, the, any of these things, control font or control color does the whole page. Control yellow, control two. Okay, now let's get back into the other thing. B, control B. That's one of my favorites. And I hope it becomes one of yours too. Control B, yellow. What is control B? B stands for background. Okay. Press control. Get the little control prompt. Go down to the thing here. Press B. And what does the prompt say? It says background effect mode. And it gives you these three little digits. These three digits represent the position of the cursor, not the cursor you've seen so far, but there's another little cursor that um, deals with background um, increments. You can have 129, there are 129 positions for that cursor. And let, let's introduce that little cursor now. Look up here in the upper left. Uh, let me bring it down. Can you see that? Right there, see that little, see that little sucker move? Not really. <laughs> I'm, well, yeah, you move it with the up and down. Left and right doesn't work because it only wants to go up and down. And I'm using repeat to make it go fast. Okay, I'm positioning that cursor. This cursor is inactive and does nothing. So forget it. Only this little itty bitty thing on the left hand side works. And how does it work? You press a color button. Okay, if I press, oh, say green, I get a green stripe. And if I press green again, I get a fatter green stripe. And if I press it again and again and again, I get a big fat green stripe. And if I hit hold down repeat, I can just wipe out everything and you can't see what's going on anymore. Okay, and it comes around to the top and controls, and there you go. That's how you make a green background. If you hit home, it does send the cursor home. It sends that little new cursor back to the start, to the zero, zero position. And if you hit erase, it takes the whole thing away from the home position. Now, the only way to get rid of the whole background, let's do that again. I'm going to press down blue this time. Hold down repeat. And now we've got a blue thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how can we do that? Yeah. If we step the cursor up on the left, and hit erase. Okay, can you erase individual lines as well? Yeah. See if I skip a space and hit erase, 
skip the cursor down, hit erase, skip it down, hit erase, skip it down, hit erase. Okay, that's how you make stripes. That's fine, it erases, you know, erase erases stuff, but when you go home, erase, you erase the whole page. If you ever need to create an entire color background, it's control B, get the background prompt. When it says zero, when you're in the home position with these three zeros, now here's a little shortcut. Come down here to the alpha pad and hit, oh, say 129, which is the maximum and then go over here to the colors and hit cyan. And it by, see, no hands. Ah, no, no. Okay, it did that for you and it brings you around to uh, the cursors down the home position. And if I hit erase, it erases the whole thing. 129 is as far as, is as far as it goes. If I were to clear that address and oh, go 50, 50 green. It'll do it 50 times and stop. Now it still says 50, and if I hit green again, it'll do it another 50 times. And it'll do it again. So, however, I'm not gonna hit home and erase and get rid of it. Okay, clear. So if you wanted to make some stripes, you could bring, you could hit cursor down, get it to about where you think it belongs, and hit, oh, yellow, yellow. Bring the cursor down some more to the bottom and hit yellow, yellow. Uh, blue, blue, yellow, yellow. Green, green, green. And you decide you like that for both places, so you go yellow, yellow, blue, blue. The smallest, it, it gives you four scan lines. One stripe is four scan lines. Okay, now here's a little interesting thing. Now say you're done with that and you wanna move the text around a little bit. I'm gonna go back and erase that one. Okay, you hit control again to come out of that mode. Now I'm back in the ready mode. I can now do, now the regular cursor works and I can move, I can bring that cursor down. Let's do that, bring the cursor down to the word control and shift row down a little bit to make that look nicer. Okay. Well, that's nice. Say I decide, oh, I don't like that. I'm, I need to retype. Let's do it again. If I hit erase, only the text goes away. The background stays the same. Now that would lead you to believe that the only way to get rid of the background is by going back into control B. There is a quick, there's a little pattern you learn. Control B, home, erase, control. Okay, now you've gotten rid of the background. If I had, let's redo that whole thing here. Control B, control B, get into the background mode, bring the cursor down, and hit the stripes, yellow, yellow, red, red, skip it down, yellow, yellow, red, red. Okay, I'm still in the background mode. So to come out of it, I have to hit control again. Okay, now I've got the cursor back, the regular cursor back, and I can move the text around. And I say, what if I want to get rid of the background? Oh, well, let's, let's do something else first. I'm going to put a record mark in here and record this whole thing on page 14. Okay, now I've got that if I need it again. Okay, and I say, what if I just want to get rid of the background and leave the, the letters? Okay, control, B, home, erase, control, to come back out of the mode. Erase, read, 14. Is there any shorter way to do that? Yeah, there's a key over here.
called Escape. ESC. ESC. It's right next to Exec. The reason it's next to Exec is that it's important. It's serious business. When you hit Escape, you reset everything. You you're blowing away a lot of stuff here. You don't you don't fool with the disk, obviously, but you're going to blow away anything in the buffer, and you're going to uh, reset all the colors and all the uh, well, not the fonts, but okay. Escape. Background goes away. Text goes away. This resets to white. That resets to font one. It's, you're back where you were when you fired it up, basically. Um, so don't use escape too casually. You can treat it like a race when you, when you get to know what you're doing. The final control uh, thing is P for palette. When you fire the camera up in the morning, you have to tell it what fonts. You have to pick the fonts, right? You've got to say either with the auto load or, or manually, you pick the fonts. But you don't pick the colors. The colors come up automatically. The colors are full saturated test pattern colors. Okay, It is the limits of the system. But you need not be limited to those. There are 64 you can choose from. And here's how you get to them. You come over here to control. And you get the prompt. Control. And then you hit the character P. Uh, P is for palette. That's the palette of colors to choose from. Now I'm going to do something. Well, I'm going to take that away for a second so you can see the operation. Okay. Um, what you've got on your screen is now the palette of colors you can choose from. One of them is flashing, and that's the cursor. The cursor move keys now move that. Okay, these cursor move keys are going to move the flashing color around. Up, left, down. And you put it on the color you want. You say, I want that. No, I don't either. I want that. Because. And don't judge what it looks like when it's flashing. Pick it when, when the cursor is not on the color. That's what you're going to get. So move the cursor to that color. And what do you do with it? Well, what good is that? Well, you can now tell, you, you can tell the Chiron where you want that color. You can say, I never use red. Red is fully saturated and it's icky. So I'm going to put this green into the hole normally called red. There. I just did that. Just press the button and lo, it is there. And how do we know that? Well, if I hit control again to come out of that mode, the prompt says, right now I've selected white. If I go over here and select red, it gives me a number. Okay, the number is four or five. Those are coordinates of, if you remember that the palette, it's saying row four, color five. That's what I put in there. I think it's row. I think that's how it works. Green, magenta is still magenta. Blue is still blue. Cyan. Okay, you can replace them all. Let's do that. Control, P for palette. I'm going to take, oh, that nice dark green and put that in green. And I'm going to skip over here and take this kind of battleship gray and put that in magenta. And I'm going to put this nice dark gray in blue. And put this uh, kind of sick green here in cyan. And put this nice mellow orange in yellow. And that's all. And hit control to come out of that mode. White is still white, but that's now color 41. That's a 88. 85, 57, 36, 45. And how do we know this? Let me go back over here. Well, if I press red and type something, it's not red anymore. It's whatever that is. Come down here. There's my battleship gray. 
There's a nice white gray. Cyan. Okay. So you need not feel limited to the primary colors that come up on the Chiron. Okay, I reloaded the palette in that exercise. Um, if I hit escape, or call the escape key, it will undo that. Let's do that. Escape. That's white now. Oh, that's green. There's yellow. There's cyan. There's blue. There's magenta. There's red. It re-put the primary colors back in there, and all that palette loading is gone. All that, all that work is for naught. Let's do it again. Control P. Step the cursor down to this little orange here. Oops, sorry. And put that in red. Um, but before I do that, it's flashing. I'm going to press that and I'm going to put it in there. But I'm going to do something else. Rather than have the number, <coughs> excuse me, rather than have the number 41 or whatever it was in this case, it's going to be 51. Rather than have that come up, I want to give myself some kind of memory jogger thing, right? So what is that? It's orange, right? Okay. I'm going to type on the, while that's flashing, and before I put it into the hole where I want it, I'm going to give myself a four-letter mnemonic. O-R-N-G red. Okay. Now when I come out of control here, oh, rats. It didn't work that way. It's the other way around. You put it in first, then type the mnemonic. See, it says 51. I didn't want that. Control, P, red, O, R, N, G, control, there. That's how it works. Now I have a little mnemonic that says, yeah, that's white, and that's green, and that's yellow, and that's cyan, and that's blue. That's magenta, but that's orange. I don't have to live with the numbers if I don't want to. And sure enough, when I... Type, I get orange. O R E N G. Okay. So that's that's control palette. You can do that with all six if you had to. When you record a page, um, when you record a page onto the disk you record not only the letters, but the color settings as well, the palette settings as well. So when you read that back, well, let's demonstrate that. Uh, I'm going to say Control, P for palette. Oops. I'm going to put uh, this sort of a brown. I'm going to say, oh, 